everyone, welcome to Xiamen for the final IFSC Speed World Cup of 2016. I'm Charlie Bosco, alongside me, Commander Jar Zibiak. How is that for pronunciation? Perfect. Commander, for people that don't know you, are, you are a Team Canada coach. You're also involved with the climbing wall on Vancouver Island. But tell us a bit about yourself and why you're qualified to talk us through this speed competition. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm qualified. I do find speed climbing fascinating. I uh, built the first uh, homologated speed wall in North America and along with my team at the Boulders hosted the first Speed World Cup in North America and uh, I also coach speed. And what is your current role within Team Canada? I manage the Open Lead and Speed Team. So if you've been to a World Cup you may well have seen Commander there, she's a very familiar face for the World Cups. Unfortunately no Canadian athletes in today's finals but we can see our wall there. Just so you know we are in, just before I Carry on, we'll just show you the uh, lineup for the women's speed. Of course, Anouk Jobert and a bit further down the order, Yulia Kaplina, the only two women who can win the overall title today. Anouk Jobert currently leading the way. Also, uh, the other big names, including last week's podium, third place, Alexandra Rosinska. And then the men, Reza Ali Porcheny, he'll be out first. Blistering time of 5.97 in the qualifiers about half an hour ago. Conditions not ideal here in Shearman, very humid. Just, I was about to say before we saw the start list, we did actually have a typhoon warning when we arrived in Shearman. Luckily, the venue is inside, so the speed competition was never in any danger. As you can see there, we're in what I think will be a shopping center one day. This is about the only part of the building that's complete, but we are indoors. But yeah, there was a typhoon warning. It didn't materialize, which Part of me was slightly disappointed by. We went for a nice walk on the beach yesterday in the middle of a torrential downpour, and uh, it was enough typhoon for me. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. too disappointed. Yeah, we did have about an hour of extremely heavy rain yesterday with wind, and they were getting sandbags ready outside, and there were police on the corners. It was all very exciting, but uh, didn't quite materialize into the typhoon we were not hoping for, but I was slightly interested to see what a typhoon looked like. We'll have to wait. The lead wall is outside, by the way. If you're watching our live stream tomorrow, we will be outside for the lead. So out first, Anouk Schubert. Of course, she can claim the overall title. She has just won her fourth World Cup in a row a few days ago in Wujiang, and she takes on Suoma Pubu of China, who was also in the final last week in Wujiang. It's a good start from Anouk. Doesn't need to quite go at full speed to win this one. The cameraman's struggling to keep them both in the frame. This should be a relatively easy run for Anouk. It is still 10.66 for Pubu, not too bad a time. And I come on, go ahead. I find it very impressive when a speed athlete can dial back when they need to. It, it's an incredibly hard skill and uh, a huge feat of athleticism. How is that calculated for the athlete as, as they're climbing? Do you just kind of look where the opponent is, or do you just, I mean, they know they know who they're, they're up against. Will they moderate their pace from the start, or do they have a look halfway through? It's dangerous to moderate your pace from the start, just in case uh, the other person's an unknown, and with the Chinese athletes, that might be the case. But I think they have a very good sense of where the other person is on the wall. So this time Svetlana Motovilova will take on Victoire Andrié of France. Team France is strong as ever this weekend. This could be tight. It's a good start for both women, relatively even so far, but Motovilova opening up a bit of a lead. Less than a metre though, a slip could decide it. No, not quite, 9.16. Andrié quarter towards the top there. Motovilova had enough of a lead to claim it, so he proceeds to the next round, the round of eight. And this is a straight knockout competition right now. The qualifier rounds were the seeding rounds. Uh, fastest time uh, puts you in first place. Now to get to the round of 16, straight knockout. Yeah, that's uh, a good point. If you are new to speed climbing, we hope there are people watching this who've not seen our sport before. Once we get to the, our televised round, the round of 16 onwards, it is pure knockout. You're racing the person next to you, not the clock. Race o'clock in the qualifiers, but here it's just the person next to you. An all Poland race, one of our 
Stronger athletes will be out already at this early stage. Bookcheck on the left, Brozak on the right. Good start from Brozak, but Bookcheck quickly reined in the lead. And if anything, she's opening up one of her own. I think she's going to take this. She is. 8.40, 8.67 for Brozak. Glad book check. She's uh, had a good season, currently sitting fourth in the overall standing. She can't win the title, but a good season. Did you see it again there? That's what a quarter of a second looks like. It must always be disappointing when you're racing your fellow country person. Yeah, and it's something we see in the, the hotel and the few days leading up to the venue, the Polish team really tight and it, it must be it must be difficult. Adds another element to it, but got a job to do and Claudia Bookcheck did it in 8.60. So Aurelia Sarason, she's out next. Adita Ropek on the right, the veteran speed climber. Currently 10th in the uh, overall standings for 2016. We will talk overall standings in the women's competition shortly. And it's a fast start from Ropek. Once again, Saracen gained that gown quickly and I think he's going to hold on to this lead she's developed. If anything, it's growing towards the top. It is 8.64, very similar time to the time we just saw in the left lane from Claudia Bookcheck. Edita had a knee injury, a fairly serious one in 2013, and it is nice to see that she has recovered from it. At the time, I think no one was quite sure. So here's one of the women who could claim the overall title today. Yulia Kaplina, one of only two, her and Anouk Jobert. She's up against Nina Lack. If you watched our coverage from Wujiang, you'll have seen Nina's brother Thomas who's in the commentary box explaining about the new Austrian training facilities that are about to open up in Innsbruck. Keep an eye on Team Austria in all disciplines over the next few years, as if they weren't strong enough. Both women twitch there. Kaplina first, then Nina Lack, but it was a clean start from both, and Kaplina's opening up a big lead. And we'll bring this home at 8.31. Quite a quick time. Nina still comes under 10 seconds, though. I hope Thomas, watching at home, is happy with that. It's impressive I to watch the Austrian team come on in speed, and uh, I think given that they're such a, climbing, a strong climbing nation, we're expecting a lot from them. Yeah, as part of the, the new climbing wall in Innsbruck, there's nearly a thousand square meters dedicated just to the training of the Austrian national team that won't be open to the public. So a bit like we've seen with the French team, particularly in bouldering, you'd expect they're going to make some pretty big strides in the next few years, which given that the Olympics is a combined discipline event, it's going to be vital. Alma Fleury on the left here against Alma Renic. Another strong French athlete. Ukraine always strong in speed climb. There's a slight twitch from Arenic early on and it seems to disrupt her. Slip very low down on the third hold. Alma Fleury just needs to cruise home, she does. I think she realized very early on that she had an unopposed run to the line there. The athletes are commenting on the humidity in the venue. We are indoors and sheltered from the sun, but it is pretty slippery. And I yeah. think that's what we just saw. As a, as a coach, what can you do to try and negate the effects of humidity? Is it just a case of saying to them, try and go half a second slower? It's, it's better than slipping? Uh, well, I think it starts with liquid chalk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, yeah, you have to be exceptionally, exceptionally aware of your grip. And it's why we're not going to probably see incredibly uh, world record level times. Alexandra Rudzinski currently sits third overall and was third a few days ago in Wujiang. She takes on Dean Yu of China. It's a good start from Niu. And Rudzinski's going to have to work for this one. She has opened up a small lead. And she's just about hanging on to it. Certainly was a bit tighter than uh, I think Rudzinski might have been expecting. Look, this quick, quick swap of wry smiles between the two competitors. And I think that's the danger of ever assuming that you know what you're up against in an opponent. Yeah, with perfect timing, just as I was suggesting that you might moderate your pace if you're not aware of your opponent. Alexander <laughs> Rosinsko shows us why that might not be such a good idea. And now we have the reigning world champion, Anna Tsiganova. She skipped the competition in Arco just before Paris, and it seemed to pay dividends because she got an extra block of training in and won the world championship ahead of hot favourite Anouk Jobert, who was, of course, climbing in front of a home crowd. She'll take on Kulan Hei of China. 
very focused, Anna. And she gets a good start, and if anything, that lead's increasing. Should be a relatively straightforward one for Siganova. Oh. Commentator's curse strikes again, sneaks under <laughs> 10 seconds, wins it by one second. This is the last competition in what is an incredibly long season for speed climbers. I think it started in April this year, and they must be feeling it. Yeah, speaking of how long a season it's been, we'll just quickly talk through the overall rankings because Anouk Jobert is currently sitting on 491 points. Yulia Kaplina is on 446. They are the only two climbers who can claim the overall title in the women's competition. Remember, of course, we have seven World Cups this year, and each climber's worst score, their worst result across those seven, is taken off their soul. So it's not quite as simple as just seeing how many points you get from today's result and adding it to your total. You have to bear in mind what the worst result of the climber was. So it does become very complicated. Let's keep it simple for now and say that if Anouk Jobert beats Yulia Kaplina, finishes ahead of her today, then she will be the overall World Cup champion. Let's keep it simple. We'll save the advanced maths for a bit later in the competition. <laughs> We move on to the men's competition. Men's competition has, of course, been decided after all the maths had been done. Marcin Zienski was the winner. He can't be caught. Razor Ali Poshena, though, he'd love another win. And his explosive style could drive him to another win. He was topping the qualifying 5.97, 6.20 on this first one. Guangdong Lee, 9.87, still under 10. But Razor, you'd have to say, was always going to win that one and does so pretty, pretty easily. And I was going to ask you, actually, Commander, we touched on it very briefly then about the Olympics and how it'll be a combined discipline. As a coach, what will be the balance of your athlete's training between the three disciplines and how do you manage that? I appreciate that's a big We're question. <laughs> well, a lot of it's still up for discussion because we don't know exactly what the format is. We know it's com three combined disciplines. We don't know how that's going to be scored or managed. Sorry for the non-answer. No, it's okay. I'm going to pick. I'll carry on pricking your brains in just a second after we've had this all-Russia race of Stanislav Kokorin on the left, Alexander Shikov on the right. It was a, I was about to say a fast start from Shikov, a bit too fast. Is False start. Did uh, one of them have a second? That's is it his second false start on the right? It is. Yes, it's Shikov's second false start. Of course, you're allowed. But there was a twitch there from Kokorin. Mm. It was very close to a good start. It, it, it looked almost legal, but we can see there. Yeah. Of course, we do have an electronic timing device, so the fact that I think it was a good start doesn't really mean anything. It and we didn't start. see if it was a technical false or not, whether the reaction time was under a uh, tenth of a second. So sounds of Kokorin unopposed. Won't use up too much energy, you wouldn't have thought here. Oh. <laughs> he Still just needs to down. register a time, that's all he needs to do. This could be the slowest round <laughs> of 16 time we see, 11.76. Yeah, that's a, a good point uh, you make, Commander, because of course, reacting time is not that you go before the sound of the buzzer, it's if you go within one tenth of a second of it, that is considered the limit of what is possible in terms of human reaction. So. You don't, have to, you don't have to be ahead of the buzzer, you have to be more than one tenth of a second after the buzzer. So Kokorin progresses. You are allowed one full start per competition, but that competition includes a qualifying round. Alexander Shikov had a full start in the qualifying round, which means he had no second chances in this round of 16. Unfortunately, another full start, he is out. Kokorin progressive. We've got Marcin Zienski now, strong favorite. Barely remember what it's like not to win. So, of course, claim the overall title. He takes on Quentin Nambo, and it's a false start from oh, Marcin. I don't recall if he had one in qualifiers. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, that's his second false start, I believe. Oh, no, it wasn't. No, Sorry, just, that's my bad. <laughs> oh. No, I think it is. We don't actually have the official oh, list of who, who false started, so the I only thing I have is my memory of it. I, I was fairly sure he had, so there we go. I didn't remember one from Marcin, but he must have had one. There we go. False oh. start. So we will have a uh, 
surprise at round of eight, Quentin Nambo, and he came into this, wouldn't really have fancied his chances of progressing in against the world champion and world cup champion, but he does so, 7.16 as well, pretty fast time it's considering he was unopposed. I feel bad for Martin, I'm sure he would have preferred to end the season on a different note, however, it was a breakout year for him and I think on, on the whole he'll be happy. He will, of course. Uh, he was third last week in Wujiang, but he's, do he's done enough to claim the overall World Cup title just as well with a false start. And he's also the world champion. So much as he'll be disappointed, I suspect that uh, after a few beers tonight, he might reflect that it wasn't such a bad year after all. Vladislav, Vladislav excuse me, Dulin of Russia. We'll take on Ludovic off of Sali on the right. Dulin, of course, very close to winning last week in Wujang. He's only beaten in the big final by Xixin Song. And that was after a slip. Dulin was on the way to winning the competition and slipped on the very final move heading for the timing pad. And Xixin just stuck in and win it. But Vladislav, certainly in the category of people that can win today, especially with Martin out. And he's flying up this left-hand route so far. Very clean run. 6.39. How can the speed climbers go about moderating their time as, uh, as the event progresses and round on round? Because we obviously we do see them go faster and faster each time. Uh, it's part of their training. They do laps uh, to try and ensure that they have the stamina that's necessary. They also try not to expend any more energy than is necessary. We see here Basim Mawem. Climbed really well a few days ago in uh, Wujiang, a couple of hours flight up the coast from where we are down here in Xiamen. It was uh, humid there, but it's even more humid here. He's taking on Yan Kriz. This should be a fairly tight one. Of course, you know Yan's compatriot, Libor Hirosa, very well. He's not here. Just explain for people that are just tuning in why we haven't got Libor with us. Uh, Libor's uh, ended his competition season in Paris, and he's in the process of... Uh, getting a Canadian uh, residency and becoming our new head coach. <laughs> His compatriot Jan Kriz is here though. He's got to take on Basim Awem, who I have to say, winning um, in Wujiang, but he, he looked very smooth, very controlled style. Really seemed to know exactly what he needed to do in each round. He's got a tough opponent this time though, and he doesn't get it right. Big slip from Basim. Oh, but... but but raw speed sees him through, 6.68. Yeah. A slip from Yang Kriz also saw it over. But Basser, I think, had already caught him by that stage. Quite a big slip, but just a raw pace to catch him. So he progresses. Some of the top athletes, the power they generate in their legs is so substantial that while a slip is harmful, they can make up for it so quickly. Let's have another look here. It was that left foot on the fourth hold from but Basser. He had long enough to, yeah, I think he'd, if not drawn level, already gained the lead by the time Jan slipped. Oh, and I think his hand popped off because of humidity. No. He'll be not thrilled about that. It looked as, for a second as if Jan was suggesting to the judges he wasn't happy with something. But I don't think he has lodged a complaint. I didn't see anything wrong with the belaying, although I was paying more attention to Bassa. If we see that again, we'll, uh, we'll see if there was anything wrong. In the meantime, Guillaume Moreau takes on Hamid Reza, who's man to Zandijani, excuse me. The easier of the two Iranian names to uh, pronounce, believe it or not. <laughs> Slight twitch from Hamid Reza there, but then instantly followed by a slip. How often we see that, that they get a good start, but it almost puts them off. And yes, 6.69 from Guillaume Moreau. Yeah, we do see that quite often, that an athlete just twitches before they set off, and it seems to throw their, their rhythm, and they get a, a slip almost immediately. It's hard to keep your body under maximum tension and the randomized starts make it even harder. And if you're gaming the system, if you're trying to guess what the random start will be, it, it, I think that's what causes it. Worth remembering, it does happen in all sports, of course. I remember, I remember Usain Bolt in Deju, I think it was, 2010, the World Championships, he false started. so. It's not, it's not just speed climbers, it's the fastest man in the world does it as well. It wasn't a false start from uh, Hamid Razor, but as I say, that twitch, and as I say, losing maximum tension, just seemed to throw him and he slipped almost straight away. So now, last week's winner, Kinzin takes on Leonardo Jantero. 
Leonardo, no slouch himself, but she's in looking very much in form and 6.38, does he not? Not the fastest time of this round of 16, but he had the lead from early on and held on to it. He and, he and his wife recently had uh, their first child, and so I'm glad to see that he's getting enough sleep that he can train. Well, apparently, apparently they had twins. Oh, that's I, true. I, I can't begin to uh, imagine, <laughs> but he just somehow looks well rested. I mean, I don't have twins of my own, but from people who do, they certainly don't look very well rested in the first year of uh, having them, but maybe separate bedrooms. Meanwhile, we've got the rec world record holder, Daniel Boldyrev. He's out. Takes on Sihong Wu of China. Daniel, strong favorites in this one, but with these human conditions, anything can happen. We've already seen Marcin Zienski false start. Daniel, of course, the world record holder. This war, this war we have here in Xi'an, and it's not certified for world record, so it won't. Daniel will leave here. Still the world record holder, no matter what happens. False start, even uh, you can see that one with the naked eye from U. The athletes are saying that the wall is uh, pretty well constructed and it feels good, so it must have missed homologation by a very little bit. Tolerances are a matter of one millimeter, so it, it is a tight run thing, but yeah. And we had to alter our wall twice after it was built in order to be homologated. It was. Uh, and obviously the building materials such as wood, wood warps over time and changes shape. Is that an ongoing process? Is that an annual process? I'll ask you in a second. <laughs> sure. And watch Daniel, who's used up his one false start. Still a pretty quick start from him, but almost instantly a slip. And Daniel doesn't look as if he's looked over to the right, doesn't realize, doesn't need to go too fast. 6.38, fairly fast for the, uh, for the circumstances. So about, yes, does the wall need to be checked every year? How often does that happen? Well, I, th I don't know that there's a process for that, but we pay close attention to ours, and we do know that over time it does warp, and we need to tighten the panels and readjust them. We see there the women's final eight, Anouk Jobert, Svetlana Motovilova, Claudia Bukchek, Aurelia Sarasun, Yulia Kaplina, Oma Fleury, Alexandra Rudzinska, and Anna Siganova are your final eight, and Anouk Jobert. Remember, there's a lot of maths that can be done, but the simple equation is that if she finishes higher than Yulia Kaplina today, she is the overall World Cup champion for 2016. Takes on Svetlana Motovilova, and she gets a good start. Anouk, about a metre lead so far, and if anything, that's growing. If she glances to the right, she'll see she's got a relatively easy run to the top. Svetlana just over 10 seconds, 10.65, so Anouk progresses safely. It looks like she banged her knee on the way up. That, that could be just the perspective from here, but it didn't look fun. No. Uh, Svetlana, that is. Yeah, Svetlana, just uh, it's about mid-height. We may see a replay. In the meantime, we're getting through the races quickly here in uh, Xiamen. Ruthless organization. Claudia Book checks back out. Remember, she beat Anna Brozek, her compatriot, in the first round of 16. In this round of eight, she takes on Aurelia Saris of the France. Looking very focused, Claudia. Fourth in the overall standings, of course. Already been on a podium a couple of times this year. Chongqing, Arco. The Polish team is pretty solid, and as you said, they're pretty tight knit as well. And it's nice to have that support, I think. Put check on the left, Saracen on the right. Both of them twitching slightly at the start. And it's Saracen who was faster in the lower third, oh, but a slip at mid height. These humid conditions cause a lot of slips. We haven't had many straight races. We certainly haven't had many tight races. I think 0.27 of a second, the closest we've had, and it's really been the only one that's been close. Book check progresses. Yep, so speaking of Poland and their speed climbers, we are going to Roslav in Poland next year for the World Games. It's a big event. The Polish team very much uh, focused on that. Claudia will be there, I'm sure. We spoke to Marcin Zienski early. You can see that interview on Facebook. He's already looking forward to it. I believe it's the first weekend of July in 
Roslav. Spelt um. Rocklaw if you see it on the website. <laughs> uh, I was schooled in my Polish pronunciation. I won't correct you. <laughs> Julia Kaplina here in with a shot of winning the overall oh. World Cup champions today. And she's got a meet a lead over Elma Fleury. I think she's going to hang on to it. She is 8.02 to 8.88 from Fleury. Clean runs from both. Just saying we haven't seen that many clean runs. Conditions, yeah, not ideal here in Shearman. I have to say, when we were inside, I thought conditions might be slightly better, but the building we're in is still under construction pretty much. If you take a wrong turn while you're looking for the loo or the, uh, the catering area, you're suddenly in the construction site. So the air conditioning obviously not installed just yet. And it it doesn't feel like, it feels like about the second hottest competition of the year after uh, Mumbai, India. <laughs> Mumbai, India, wow. <laughs> it makes me sweat just thinking about how hot it was. <laughs> Best food of the year, though, won by. Absolutely. So Rudzinska on the left, world championship winner, Tigan over on the right. And this is tight, oh. but it's not once uh, Rudzinska slipped. Oh. 8.07, good time for Tigan over. Perhaps not her fastest, but dealing with these humid conditions, well, she'll, pro she'll progress. As we see it again, here she comes to the top out. Bang. Very firm slap of the timing device, 8.07. So our fourth semi-finalist will be Anouk Jobert, Claudia Bukcek, Yulia Kaplina, and Anna Tsiganova. It's flying by this, uh, this World Cup in Shearman. <laughs> we see there our final eight in the men's competition, Razor Ali Porshena, Stanislav Kokorin, Quentin Nambo, Franz, Vladislav Dolin of Russia, Basama Wem, Guillaume Moreau, Shitin Song and Daniel Bolirev, extremely strong final eight. If you are just joining us, Martin Zienski, of course, the World Championship winner in Paris and overall World Cup winner for 2016. Not present, two false starts in the competition, so he's out. Razor, though, keep an eye on him. Left hand lane, lane A, he skips out the fourth handhold. This is a new technique from Razor. And if we see a slow motion replay of it afterwards, which hopefully we will, <laughs> you'll see just how oh, big a reach it is. Razor. Razor. False start there. Let's have another look at it in slow motion. Oh, oh no. no, it wasn't a false start. Not, it a, was not a, a false start. A technical from Stan Slav Coco. So not a false start against Reza Alaposhena, Stanislav Kokorin. We didn't see it in real time, but he waved to the judges, not happy about something. So we start again. I wonder if, uh, wonder if some mind games going on there, Razor the favourite you'd have thought in this race. I wonder if he's just trying to disrupt the rhythm a bit. If he was hoping to disrupt Razor, it seems to have worked. And you may have heard a scream there from our, our uh, background mic, or maybe even through my commentary mic because Razor, certainly a man that wears his heart on his sleeve, let out a big scream. Let's have another look at it. We can see, first of all, this technique. Quick twitch from Stanislav. So he skips out the fourth hole. There we see yeah. it. Let's have a look for the slip. Left foot. Oh. Hole number seven, I think it was. He has such power. I swear that there's a lot of tree trunks smaller <laughs> than uh, either of his legs. Yeah. I have to say, if he says it's Tuesday, it is Tuesday. If you meet Ra <laughs> you meet Razor. I was, I was out to jogging in the park in uh, Wujiang, I have to say, and I saw Razor out for a run. His pace is certainly a lot faster than me and looked a lot better in a t-shirt and shorts than I did. He is massive. So already we're on to oh. Fadislav Dulin, silver medal last week. It makes it into the final four this week, 6.36. I don't think he... Even though he's in the right-hand lane where you can see your opponent a bit better, he seems to go absolutely full tilt all the way, even though Nombo slipped early on. Let's have another look at it. There have been so many races when uh, your opponent slips and you start getting complacent, then you slip and they catch up. So you can't take it. Uh, can't, can't relax when your opponent slips. No. No, I was just saying, as you say, Razor is so explosive and, it, and yeah, he's, he is basically enormous. If it comes to a World Cup, just try, 
try and get to the warm up area, have a watch of what Razor does to warm up and also the size of him. Extraordinary build, it's just pure explosive power. I don't think he'd be much use running a marathon, but uh, for speed climbing, he is made for the job. So an all French affair, Bassama Wem against Guillaume Moreau. waiting a bit longer than they might like to here. Bassa having a final good chalk up, certainly not going to run out of chalk, the biggest, biggest chalk bag we've seen today. <laughs> He's climbed really well so far in the past two World Cups, Bassa. That sheer power and a big slip almost from the very starting move from Guillaume means he brings it home in 6.11. Good time, he looked as if he maybe had a tiny bit in the bank, a tenth a second or so. Remember, of course, Reza Ali Poshena, who was fastest in qualifying, the only man to go under six seconds in qualifying. He is out. So a time under six seconds may be enough to win any race in these conditions, you might think. I, I think so. I think you're not going to see them pushing as hard as they could simply because of the humidity and their, the lack of friction. Now, Xi Xin Song, of course, last week's winner, to add to his already impressive Palmares. He's uh, up against the world record holder in Daniel Bolderov, a clash of the titans this, in this round of eight. Susan, you think, might be more used to these conditions. Of course, he's, he lives in China. But we shall see. World Championships in Paris didn't go how he would have hoped, but he's very much back on form. Looks lean, looks fit, in great form. And he's got a lead here. Daniel beginning to rein it in, but just not so much a slip oh. as a, a slip. He almost seemed to pause for thought, Daniel, about halfway up the route there. Almost lost his rhythm and season progresses in 6.07 fast time. Great to have him back. He's one of the best speed climbers we've ever seen. And we like having him back at the World Cups. Of course, he didn't compete until Paris this year. So here's Anouk Chaubert. So she's into the final four. Of course, this is replacing the big final. In speed climbing, we call the, the race for the gold and silver medals the big final, and we call the third, fourth playoff the small final. So just to get you used to the terminology, if you're watching speed climbing for the first time, the big final refers to who gets silver and gold. Small final refers to who gets bronze and fourth. One of our judges was just at the front then not happy about something obviously fairly minor the climbers have been clipped in two men belaying teams already of course one man one person can't belay fast enough for the speed the climbers are going at so we have one person that takes a rope in another one that pulls it through the grigri Jobert on the left is oh, just yeah. stumbling can't, can't seem to find a rhythm Anouk Jobert but I think even then might do enough no 9.30 8.3, she never seemed to get oh going, Anouk no. Jobert. It'd be really interesting to see a, a replay of that. It, it does look like she hesitated to avoid slipping uh, early on in the, uh, or midway up the route. It was interesting. It didn't look as if she was moderating her pace. It, it looked as if she, she was almost hesitating. She was unsure of her movements. It, it wasn't, that was a really strange one from Anouk Jobert. Well, imagine, imagine trying to hold on to something after wiping greasy pizza on your hands, and I think <laughs> you're probably approximating the conditions here. Yeah, certainly a strange performance from Anouk Jobert. I still think she's done enough, though. The maths can wait for now. Yulia Kaplina has a chance to progress to the big final. She has the small matter of the World Championship winner from a month ago in her way, though. Anna Tiganova, she's on the right, Kaplina's on the left. And it's a fast start from Siganova. I thought close to the limit of the start, but Kaplina's sheer speed sees her through. She takes it in 7.84, fast time, 9.59 from Siganova. So Yulia Kaplina progresses to the big final. Yeah. Math wasn't my strong suit, so I'm going to let you uh, try and figure out. The well, <laughs> viewers of the IFSC will know it's certainly not my <laughs> not my strong suit either. Just talk amongst yourselves for a second while I uh, get the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> so 
it's the we're old garden, much... old garden Russia versus the new garden Russia. Yeah, we're not having much time to think here, let alone do the maths. The uh, Chinese organisers getting the athletes through at a, a real pace. Sansov Kokorin is up against Vladislav Dulin. This is an old Russian affair. And it's a good start from Kokorin, and he's hanging on to that lead. It's been about the same all the way. 6.19. Oh. Vladislav Gain in that final third, but a fifth of a uh, sorry, five hundredths of a second. See Stanislav through to the big final. It's a fabulous sport in that experience does count, and uh, Cochrane has a tremendous amount of that. So this will be an interesting race. This is uh, she's in song against Basim Marwem. A clash of the body types, if you like. Uh, Bassa, tall and relatively thin. He's still pretty solidly built. She's in a bit more on the Razor Ali Boshena mold. Small, compact, really powerful. So Bassa and Cisin, this for a place in the big finals. She's in second in a row. If he can make it, he'll have a new opponent if he does get there. Quick start from him, but I wonder if Bassa's raw pace will see him through. It will. Fast time, 6.04. I've been saying it for uh, the past couple of weeks. Bassa looking in really good form. And he just seems to be upping his pace just as he needs to. It's about. 15 hundredths of a second faster than he was in the previous round. And perhaps the conditions on the wall aren't uh, deteriorating as much as one would expect. Either that or the athletes are getting a better sense of how to work with the humidity. So by my just going to run you through my preliminary calculations. So because we have seven World Cups, the worst result is taken off each climber's score. Their worst result in one of those seven World Cups. So obviously, if they skip to World Cup, if they only skip one, it doesn't count against them because that zero is their worst score. So according to my calculations, Anouk Jobert, who came into this competition on 491 points, she will lose her 40 points, her worst result of the year, which came in Nanjing in May, and that will leave her on 451 points. Yulia Kaplina, meanwhile, who is on 446 points coming into this, she will lose Chamonix, where she only got elected six points. So that means that going into this final round of four, that Yulia is on 440 points. And Anouk Jobert is on 451. And they're racing for, Yulia's racing for first or second, and Anouk for third or Th fourth. Third or fourth. Ooh. So do, do the maths <laughs> for yourselves. I've done the hard bit. Maths is ongoing here. No, I'm going to need a pen for that one. <laughs> Just talk amongst yourselves, viewers. We'll uh, get the calculators out. So, we'll have the women's small final first. So we can see here our maths and our start list ongoing. We do have the women's small final next. That'll be followed by the women's big final, then the men's small final, then the men's big final. And 
Commander, from what you've seen so far in these extremely humid conditions here in Shearben, who do you think for this men's final? Is, is your money on uh, Basim Awem or is Stanislav, the veteran, going to bring it home? I'm going to say it's the veteran this time because I, I, well, they're both amongst the older competitors. I really admire Cochrane's mindset. He is very often not the fastest, but that experience lets him triumph in the final round. And how about in the women's competition? We've got Yulia Kaplina, she can win the World Cups. By my maths, I'm gonna put my neck on the line slightly here. By my maths, a win wins her the World Cup overall, which is extraordinary when you think Anouk Jobert's won four World Cups, but well, that's the deduction system. I, I think actually if she's in second place, she also wins. I think uh, uh, by maybe about four, four points. I think you could be right, actually. I'm pretty sure. Yes, I think she has done enough. We'll, we'll, we'll watch the action. So Anouk Jobert on the left. She's taking on Anna Tiganova. And it's a good start from Anouk, but also from Siganova. Four-time World Cup winner on the left, world champion on the right. It's four-time World Cup winner who gets it in 8-0-2. No? And Anna's uh, got the bronze medal. So I do think that means Yulia's won the overall season. She has won the overall season. You're absolutely right. Sorry, I was focusing on Anouk then. It was Anna who took it. My apologies. Let's have another look at it. Anouk had a good lead. Let's have another look at this. It was a step at the top visually. It looked as if it was Anouk. No. Is that strong final push by Anna? So, Anouk Jobert having won four World Cups in a row. She's not going to take the overall World Cup title. Extraordinary. Now this could cause some controversy actually. We'll, we'll, we'll resume in a second because we've got Vladislav Dulin against Xi Sin Song in men's small final. Silence in the arena. A replay of last week's big final. This time it's the small final. Will the result be the same? I don't think it will. I think Dulin's not going to take it. She's in looked as if he was slowing near the top there, but he did just about enough. He takes third place. So as I say, replay of last week's big final. She's in looks equally happy with bronze as he did with gold last week. But yeah, the big story, of course, in the women's event is it Yulia Kaplina will take the title. We're just confirming with uh, our judges that is the case. So on the left, Claudia Bukchuk, she's taking on Yulia Kaplina. Yulia just set herself there, almost looked like a little twitch as well. And it seems to have thrown her slightly off her rhythm, it has. I think Bukchuk's going to take this, she is 8.65, 9.66 for Kaplina. So second place for Kaplina. What a great end to the season for her. Uh, that still gives Yulia another 80 points. And, uh... Yeah, so just to confirm, Yulia Kaplina takes the uh, overall World Cup title by our maths, which I have to say is not certified by anyone. <laughs> is that uh, Yulia Kaplina finishes the season on 520 points to Anouk Jobert's 506. And I was about to say there could be an element of controversy here because that means that Yulia had one terrible World Cup where she was 25th. Anouk Jobert, meanwhile, has never done worse than eighth. And yet because your worst score is deducted, she loses eight, uh, 40 points to Yulia's eight points. 
despite being more consistent. So you wonder if there could be some controversy. Uh, the rules are the rules. No one's arguing that the rules are wrong or any rules have been broken. Or it's, but I wonder if uh, that's something that the, the IFSC might hear from uh, the French team regarding. I think everyone understands that you need the ability to either miss a World Cup or just have a really terrible performance. It's, it's the sporting world. Be interesting, and it's uh, certainly very sporty. I don't think there'd be any complaints at all. But in that final race of today, Kokorin on the left, Marwem on the right. This is for the final World Cup win of the year, and Kokorin absolutely flying up the wall. Commander have had him back for the win. He gets oh. it by a hundredth of a second. Stanislav Kokorin, first place, Basim Marwem in second. You knew all along. Oh well, I couldn't have called it that fast or that close. But he is known for having a really strong mind and might not be the fastest climber, but he is incredibly consistent. And Bassus, that's nice to see. Big smile on his face. He knows when you're beaten by a hundredth of a second, there's not a lot more you could have done. It's just one of those things, the smallest of details. This was tight. I have to say, I thought Stanislas's lead was bigger earlier on. We'll see. Let's have a look. Hundredth of a second. There it is. I think, if anything, it was almost the the movement to touch the pad, Stanislav almost d more direct to the pad and more of a slap from Bassa that actually cost him a hundredth of a second. Extraordinary stuff. So yes, Yulia Kaplina is the overall World Cup champion. Marcin Zienski, of course, had already been crowned. Apologies if it took us a while to do the maths. Of course, as we said, seven World Cups, you lose your worst score. So it makes it very complicated. But yes, we believe Yulia Kaplina wins the overall world title by 14 points. Such is the margin at this level of competition. Thank you very much, Commander, for joining me. Thank you for Thank watching. You. And we will see you tomorrow for Leeds semi-finals and finals live from Shearman.